All right, the next item is the elementary PBIS report. All right, uh, Michelle Clark and I were going to present, but Michelle would like to stay seated at this time. Um, and, uh, but anyways, what we have is uh, about two, over two years ago, we added three positions uh, into our district on uh, the uh, PBIS, uh, positive behavior interventions and supports, which basically allows our district at the elementary level to really focus in on behavior of all students. You know, tonight you've heard lots of discussion about special ed students, these kind of students. These are, we're looking at behaviors for all students. Again, trying to assist those kids that, uh, excuse me, those children that just need a little bit extra. Um, we, uh, as I said, created three positions, and I have those three teachers here tonight. Uh, just going to give an overview of what has been going on. Um, we have uh, Laura Ames from LaGrange, Amanda Betcher from Lemonwire, and Michelle Peterson from Miller. Now you guys get to talk. Just tell me when you want me to click. I will like the next time, please. Okay, so we're just going to give you a, a very brief glance at PBIS. There is, of course, you know, many things to it. But as Paul said, PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Interventions and Support. And if you notice our model here, this is our response to intervention model. And you can tell on one side there's the academic side, and the on, on the other side is the behavior side. And the behavior side is all about PBIS. And on this model, we have um, three tiers. The bottom tier is the green tier, that's tier one. And that is our universal programming. So all students receive this. This is our high quality instruction. Um, here we have um, second step where we're teaching social skills. We also have um, school-wide expectations where we're teaching them, consequences, incentives, all of that. Now, 80% of the students will respond to just that. So what about the rest of the students? They're going to need added support. So then we move up to Tier 2. Now these students still get the Tier 1 supports, but then we also add on Tier 2. So they're getting both. Tier 2 supports, they, um, we have check-in, check-out. We have say groups. We have mentoring, which um, my fellow friends will talk about what all of those things mean. And then if students don't respond to that, we also have Tier 3, which are wraparound supports, uh, community health programming, all those type of things. Okay, the next slide, please. So, Tier 1. What is at Tier 1? Whoops, can you go back one? Oh, did you have it? You didn't move that slide? Okay. So, we'll look at the triangles. On the right-hand side is the triangle. Again, that's a theoretical triangle. So, we should have about 80% of our students at that Tier 1, the biggest section. So tier 2 should be that 15%, that bluish color, and at tier 3 should be that 5%. We took all three of our in-town schools data and we looked at OERs, which are our office discipline referrals, so those are our write-ups on our Infinity program, and we can see that we at tier 1 have 84% of our students in tier 1. At Tier 2, we have 10% of our students, and at Tier 3, we have 6% of our students. So we are within that range of where our students should be. And to be honest with you, data is very important to us. That shows one little piece, but we are const constantly looking at data, and it tells us which students need to be in which tier, all those type of things. So at that Tier 1, that very first tier, we have our three to five school-wide expectations. We actually have three. You may have heard of them. Value self, value others, and value learning. Those are um, clearly defined to all students. And then we have a matrix which have those three school rules and then all the areas of the school. So it's broken down. So what does value self look like um, on the playground? And it tells all the students what um, that should look like. Those type of things. The next thing for Tier 1 is to teach behaviors. All students don't come into school knowing how to behave. We have to teach them. So we have cool tools, which are lesson plans that we use to teach students um, the behaviors. Sometimes those are videos. Sometimes they're just um, a paper lesson plan that you teach off of. We also have where adults and the students model the correct behavior. Um, sometimes when you're reteaching a skill, you might have the adult teach the inappropriate behavior so the students can see that and recognize that. I had to do that myself the other day and went down this bumpy slide that we had and almost fell off, so that was really funny. The students really enjoyed that. 
Um, we also do um, acknowledging positive behaviors all of the time. That could be as easy as, I actually think I have one, a paper paw print. This might be given to a student, oh Johnny, I see you um, walking with your hands to yourself, you're valuing others walking down the hallway. Here's a paw print. And then um, some schools, they write their names on the back and put in for a weekly paw drawing. Um, sometimes they have classrooms collect all the paws they can have and then set a goal. And so if they reach that goal, they have a certain incentive. Sometimes we do um, quarterly bingo. Sometimes we do quarterly incentives. If they reach so many paws, there's a big um, quarterly incentive or a celebration. I know one of the schools had the Toma hockey team was part of their celebration too. Um, some of the schools have um, bulletin boards where they get to play a game after they made a goal of so many paws. There are many things we do to acknowledge um, positive behavior. And then also, uh, after we teach behavior, sometimes the students still don't understand it. So then we need to either uh, reteach the behavior in another way or to continue to practice that. Now this year we had been focusing on Tier 2, and so Michelle is going to fill you in on a little bit about Tier 2. This year we actually had the opportunity as a district to attend a four-day, very intensive Tier 2 training, um, which kind of gave us a lot of insights into the Tier 2 supports and interventions. And um, really the, the meat and potatoes of our PBIS right now is are the Tier 2 interventions and is Check and Check Out. Um, check and Check Out is really our gateway intervention to, to Tier 2. Um, all students who are not responding to Tier 1 interventions receive check-in, check-out, and in a nutshell, what check-in, check-out really is, is um, we look at our data and when we determine that students um, meet a data rule, and it's, it kind of varies a little bit from school to school depending on um, the needs. So once the students meet the data rule, then that's when kind of we take over and usually get the, the parental consent to put them in check-in, check-out and they are assigned a greeter who is just another adult in the building um, that they check in with in the morning and check out with after school and that other adult kind of just offers some more positive interactions in the morning it's just a real brief you know how, how are you doing have a great day just very brief 30 seconds really um, the student takes this sheet then to their classroom teacher who fills it out throughout the day after each hour um, and really the sheets kind of vary a little bit also from building to building, but anyway, um, the goal is for students to achieve 80% of their total score, of their total points that, um, that are possible. And we kind of, we review this data, well really we review it daily because we're, we're constantly entering the data into the computer, but um, the students are on check-in, check-out for about four to six weeks when we kind of look and see how they're responding to it. And if they're meeting 80%, or if they're getting 80% of their points at that time, then we start to fade them off and check in, check out, and eventually they graduate. Um, so we do a little a graduation thing, they cap and gown, take a picture, and um, the students are really excited about that, they love that. And um, the students that are not successful with just check in, check out, that's when we start layering on the other interventions. And some of the other interventions that we have in Tier 2 are the social academic instruction groups, we call those SAG groups, if you've ever heard that term. And really all, all that we do with that is, we, we sort of see where these students who are not successful with check-in, check-out, we look at where they're having their problems, where they're getting their write-ups, because really the ODRs, um, the, the discipline referrals, those are going to, t those tell us everything that we need to know, um, when they're having the problems, where, sometimes with who, um, and we put them in a group. Sometimes that group is only one student. There might be other students that fall into that same group. And we just do, sometimes we meet, it it's, depends on the student um, on an individual basis. We might meet once <coughs> or twice, sometimes three times a week with a student for about a half hour and kind of go over the rules, go through some lesson plans um, and talk about the expectations and, and really what they need to be working on as well. Another intervention that we might introduce, and these interventions, just like everything else, it, everything else, it's based on the student need. Some students we might feel need this, the social academic instruction groups. Some students we might just do individualized check-in, check-out. We might change these goals under value self, others in learning. We might change those expectations. Some students might need to work on raising their hand in their seats or staying in their seats or talking kindly to friends. So 
that's um, individualized check and check out. Sometimes we do mentoring, and some, we often use, um, occasionally we'll use a high school student if they're available. Otherwise, I know in some of the buildings we have just other adults come in who, it might be a parent, it might be um, just another adult in the building who I know we've had custodians, some of our custodian staff do it. Um, some of the, the support staff sometimes, just people who don't normally have interactions with these students, just to kind of offer just a little bit more for the students. And really it's intended to kind of, the first thing that we generally do is, is build that relationship. So they're just hanging out, talking about whatever, what they're doing on the weekend, those, those sorts of things. Um, what am I forgetting, anything? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much it. So check in, check out alone. Um, we see 70% of our students be very successful, 70 to 80% of our students who are successful with just check in, check out. So they get back on the right track um, for, for behaviors and that's really great to see. I know it's it's kind of been eye opening because sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to get that. Does this really work? I, you know, I don't know if that would really work. But then when you look at the numbers and Laura had showed you the graphs. It, it is pretty amazing when you look at it and see, wow, you know, this, some of these things really do work or th they're being successful. The students are able to kind of get back on track and get their behaviors under control just with a little bit, um, just that little bit. And sometimes that little bit is that check-in, check-out sheet that does go home at the end of the day so parents are able to see what's going on. And um, with that, Amanda's going to talk about the um, parent involvement. Okay, so we all know that having families involved in the educational process is very good to help children do better in school, both academically and socially. So some ways that we do that um, is a parent newsletter. So this is just an example of one of the newsletters that we've sent home this year. Um, in every newsletter, we have some sort of a behavior tip. I can't really read that to tell you what it says, but <laughs> every month I do something different. Um, and then this one too has a parent support group. That's another thing that we've offered to just try to provide parents with some more positive ways to deal with behaviors um, at home as well. And this says, uh, let's get fancy for good behavior. So that was just something positive. I always try to have something positive that's happened within our school um, in there, try to include pictures. And that was just one of our school-wide incentives where parents were invited to come and have lunch with their children. Um, the kids got to dressed up in fancy clothes for the day and they played nice classical music at lunch and um, had the tables decorated and it was just a really good opportunity to build more relationships with parents. We had, I think like over 60 parents came so it was pretty crazy. We got a lot more than we realized and it was kind of a last minute thought with that and we were really surprised at how many parents were actually excited about it. So that's something that we're going to try to do some more of too. Um, so that's involvement and incentives. And then we have the PBIS website, which I'll just come over here so that I can. Okay, so this is our website. Um, this is LemonWire's one. And like I said, I tried to have lots of positive pictures on here. So these are just different incentives that we've had. This is a, a, a quarterly incentive. These All the students that um, did not receive any discipline referrals for the whole quarter got invited to the short like a half an hour dance. Um, this is more of the fancy lunch and then we do different bulletin boards to recognize those students who are displaying exceptional behavior. And then on here I also have resources for both at home and for school. So one of the things is this uh, behavior matrix which they talked about for that tier one universal support. Um, so this is very detailed as far as, I don't know if I <laughs> okay. okay, well, it describes um, what we expect the students to do in each of those settings. So, you know, exactly what it looks like to value self in hallways. And this is what we build our cool tool videos off of. So, again, back on that website. Now I want to go back home. Okay, so we have um, we have two videos on um, other schools. Miller has how many? Do you have you have videos for all of them? We have several. Yeah, I don't know. So we have two of them made. Another one just got finished this week, and um, so again, it 
those, those school tour videos oftentimes will display the, the adults acting inappropriately and then the kids doing it right. So it's really a nice way to just quick pull it up and reinforce, like, this is what I expect in the bathroom. You know, you can see the adults doing the wrong thing, and then um, one of the students will come in and display it the right way to do it. Um, so those can be used both at home or at school. And then something else that we have is this, so let's see, example matrix for at home. So this is a really good way for parents to be able to take what we do at school and bring it into their home. So again, it would be set up the same way, value, self-value, others, value, learning, but it would be geared toward what you do at home. What do you want your kids to do in their morning routine, at meal times, after school? So at the beginning of the year, I had a, when we had our open house, all this information was provided to them. I explained behavior matrix, um, what we expect of their students, and then just some ways for them to incorporate this into the home. Because again, we feel like if we can get them to be on board with what we're doing at school and get them to pull any of these ideas into their discipline at home, it's just going to be a more positive experience for the students. That's right on the, this is right on the line wire page, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any more any questions? I just have one. Um, for the check-in, check-out, when they graduate from that, do you have some students that, as the year goes on, they have to go back to we that do. for a little bit? We do. And, okay, so there is a little bit of back and forth. There is. There's a little bit, yep. Um, and I know that a lot of the questions that we've had as well with check-in, check-out is some of the students... Um, looking at the data are only written up say on the playground so then once they reach that data rule to where they would need to be on check-in check-out I know some of the questions have been but they're not getting written up in the classroom so why why are we going and doing that sorry it's not up there anymore why are we doing the check-in check-out sheet all day long then and really the answer to that is, is fluency if the students can learn um, in the classroom if they're if, even in the, even the check-in check-out sheet when they're ex when they're displaying the expected behaviors in the classroom it's hopeful we have hopes that they will then carry those behaviors over into the playground so we, we have a little bit of that of the going back on check and check out and um, we, we've had some stu some teachers that have not wanted students to go off of check and check out because they they do much better so then that's when we kind of look into well, maybe the student just needs kind of a, a, a behavior chart so mm -hmm. anything else yeah I well, we've heard so much about PBIS and yet I've I've always struggled to sort of get my hands around it, whether it's a philosophy, a formal program, it's pretty clear it's a formal program. Do you have actual classrooms devoted then to the PBI, PBIS? I mean, all the teachers to some extent are involved in it. Mm -hmm. Do they then come to you and you have a classroom for them or are you just sort of coordinating things for the teacher then to implement. I guess I'm trying to get a sense of that. A lot of what we do is really we're providing the supports in classrooms. So we're more coordinating with the classroom teachers and offering the supports where they're needed. And some classrooms obviously are going to need more support than others. So then a lot of what we do in addition to a lot of the data collection and um, analyzing is offer supports in the classroom so that those students who are displaying the behaviors are able to be successful in the classrooms as well. And okay. when we're there, we're able to provide those added on supports, like what you see in Tier 2 and Tier 3. Um, all the teachers teach those universal things, and you, we help set up you know, little boot camps to teach all of our expectations, and cool tools to refresh their memories on what we expect out of them in all areas. And by us you know, having that extra person there, we're able to go in and provide that support without taking away from the whole class. If you have one or two students who are really struggling with something, one of us can go in and take care of that behavior before it's a problem and impedes the learning of the whole room. Yeah. Or we sometimes just take the student and kind of go for a walk or just take a few minutes, do a little break with them so that just so that the rest of the learning is, is able to, to continue. Yeah. Any other questions? What I see, uh, Paul, and the rest of you, the, the report that you've given, what a, what a tremendous asset it is to our district for what you're doing. Uh, assisting these students to be better people. Uh, I think it's just great. I'm, I'm glad that we heard the report mm -hmm. because I had no idea that you were doing this much. Uh, I think it's just great. All, all three of you in your report. It's, it's great to, to hear. And it's good to hear that the data seems mm -hmm. to suggest that it is really working. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything else? 
On behalf of all the elementaries, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.